welcome back to this 001 Game Creator video tutorial series, where we'll be continuing to cover how to create your very own role-playing game, from start to finish, using the built-in action RPG template. In this fourth tutorial, we'll be adding new resources, creating a start menu, and changing how the player's health is represented on the hood. Let's start things off by creating a simple background for our start menu. To do this, click on the sprites button along the main toolbar to open the sprite editor. Then click on the add resource button in the top left corner, select the graphic preset and click OK. Next, click on the large plus icon and select either blank images for if you intend to create your own, or image files to import existing ones. For this tutorial, I'll be creating a simple filled background, so I'll be selecting blank images. Set the number to 1, the width to 96 and the height to 96. Then right click the blank frame and select edit from the drop down menu to open the built in graphic editor. Here, you can design your background however you want. For my background, I'm going to just use the Flood Fill tool to create a simple one color background. When you're finished, click on the cross in the top right corner of the window and click Yes to save changes. Then give your sprite an appropriate name. I'm going to name mine Background. Now select the Interfaces tab from the bottom left corner of the screen and click on the New button besides it to create a new interface. Give your interface an appropriate name and then click OK to create it. I'll name mine Start Menu. Now click on the Window Field icon at the top. Move your mouse cursor over the interface and left click to place it. Click on the Sprite button and select the background you just created, then give your field an appropriate name. I've named mine Background. Select each of the four anchor points from the Maintain Distance from Edge section in order to ensure the background always stretches to fill the screen, regardless of the user's screen resolution. Click OK to close the field window and, with the pointer tool selected, move your field to the top left corner of the interface. Then click and drag on the bottom right size handle and move your mouse cursor to the bottom right of the interface so that your field fills the entire interface. You'll notice that despite the original small size of our background, the graphic won't become blurred or distorted when stretched. This is because window fields automatically scale in tile sprites, which makes them ideal for creating backgrounds like this one. Now click on the text slash graphic field icon, move your mouse cursor over your interface and left click to place it. Change the initial text value to new game and give your field an appropriate name as well. I'll name mine new game button. Then click and drag inside the alignment box so that the blue cross is centered and tick the selectable checkbox. Finally, in the visual section, select text from the visual setting color drop down menu. This will change the color of the field for different states, such as when the mouse cursor is hovering over it. If you want to set your own colors, then leave the setting as custom and change the colors accordingly. You can change the presets themselves from the visual settings window, which can be accessed from either the game settings window or from the game menu. Next, double click the activated trigger to open the script editor. Click on the expand events button, type interface into the search box and then double click on the show and hide interface event. Select this as the interface and then set the turn option to off. Create another field and configure it the same way as your new game field, only this time change the initial text to quick game and in the activated trigger use a quick game event to close your game completely. Now we just need our start menu to show up as soon as the game starts. To do this, click on the system triggers button along the main toolbar and double click the introduction system trigger to open the script editor. Then add a show and hide interface event like before, only this time selecting start menu as the interface and setting the turn option to on. Test your game from the beginning by clicking the test game button along the main toolbar or by pressing F5 on your keyboard to see your start menu in action. Before we conclude this tutorial, let's also look into modifying an existing interface. For this, we're going to change how our player's health is displayed on the hood or heads up display. First, let's start by creating a new heart sprite that we'll use to replace the current health meter. From within the sprite editor, click on the add resource button and select graphic like we did before for the background. Then click on the large plus icon and select either blank images for if you intend to create your own or image files to import existing ones. This time, I'm going to select image files as I already have three heart graphics I'm going to use. For my first frame, I have a full heart, my second frame is half empty, and my third frame is completely empty. These will represent the different states of our player's health. Be sure to give your sprite an appropriate name. I'll name mine Heart. Once you've finished creating or importing your sprites, click OK to close the sprite editor and then select the hood interface from the panel in the bottom left of the screen. With the pointer tool selected, double click on the HP field to open the field window. Set the behavior from graph to units and select through effect frames for the fractions and empties directly underneath. Then set the field sprite to the heart sprite. 
now set the width and height to 10 by 10, which will determine how many hearts are displayed on each line, and set the visual setting color to border so that no color tints are being applied to the sprite. By changing the initial value, we can see our new heart indicator in action. Set the initial value to 4.5 and you'll see four full hearts, one half heart, and five empty ones. You can expand upon this concept further by introducing quarter states for your heart meter. You just need to add additional frames to your heart sprite to show a heart with three quarters remaining and a heart with only a single quarter remaining. In the next tutorial, we'll be making magic, adding a new party member, and creating a kill quest, as well as building our game so that others can play it.